And thank you guys for joining us for episode 59 of Black Coffee and Crime. Uh, this is the last episode for October um, because the next time we see us, it'll be after Halloween. The story that we're going to talk about today is not specifically dealing with Halloween, but it is talking about one of the scariest stories and one of the scariest movies ever filmed, The Exorcist. We're going to talk about the origin story of The Exorcist. Um, and everything that happened to this young man is included in that movie. Of course, they probably took some poetic license, but everything in the story of Roland Doe is included in the actual mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. So, um, thank you to some, you know, new subscribers on YouTube. Also, new followers on uh, Instagram. Seems like there's been an influx of followers on Instagram. Definitely on Instagram. Right. We don't know why you oh came but we're right here. here. <laughs> um, so, thank you all for joining us. This is episode 59. Uh, the way we do things here, this is completely unscripted. We know what we're going to talk about. We just don't know what we're going to say about it. Uh, we may get in trouble. If there's something in here that we talk about that is triggering to you for whatever reason, we would prefer that you just exit out of this episode and come back to a different one. We don't want you traumatized at all. Um, we may get some stuff wrong. As a matter of fact, um, in one of the stories that we did about Serenity Richardson, um, completely unbeknownst to us, we did get some details wrong. We were, out, you know, we were informed by her, her mother, actually, that there were some things that were incorrect. Um, of course, we apologized um, and really offered to retract and go back and correct those things. But understandably, she said that she would rather not go into those details and the things that we got incorrect. Um, and we got those things from public records. So we didn't make those up. So uh, we, you know, if that happens, we will apologize. We are very sorry for that. Wow. We don't want to, we're not here to be malicious or anything. We just talk about crime stories and other things that we find on the internet. Um, however, if there is anything that is concerning to you, um, any subjects you want to talk about, any comments, please leave comments in the video. And you can also visit us on Facebook and Instagram at Black Coffee Crime. All right. That being said, we also do church announcements. Um, any announcements, any church announcements coming forward? No, I just pray for my knee. My knee been struggling. It been struggling. Almost had, I, I was told to, to break out my four prong cane, but your girl ain't about to do that. We just gonna, we gonna touch yeah. in the creek that my knee get better. Hallelujah. All right. All and Brad, right. don't be over there, uh, over there sneagling. Nope. What? I said, I, I was saying hallelujah. We was, I was sitting in the middle for you. Talk about me. Somebody oh, told me to use both my my canes, and I was I told them I wasn't that broke down. Oh, nothing. Just don't even ask me why I have two prong canes. But just yeah. know, okay, I ain't that broke down. That's it for the sick and shut in. <laughs> Oh, Lori, yes. Um, I made a church dance, but she gone sign. Yes. So she said, we just going to touch and agree about her ailments. Amen. Um, I guess that's, that's, that's it for the, for the stick and shut in list. Uh, uh, yeah. We ain't got no more church announcements. Uh, if, if, if you've been here long enough. To, we're still working on the building fund, y'all. Yes. This episode what? So, so we, we like like Steve Harvey say we ain't put a door knob. No, we still in the storefront. We ain't built nothing. We ain't put a door knob on, on it. Mm -mm. No. Nobody paying tithes and offering. Well, the... Got to bring their own chairs. Mm. Mm. So you, you, we know you want to be here if you bring your own chair, amen, and your own communion cup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all bring your own communion cup because we ain't got. <laughs> Last the last ones we had, y'all stole them. And we ain't buying no new ones. So break your own communion cup. Oh yeah. Building fund. Let's always keep the building fun. Yes. In your um, if y'all been here long enough, you know that we have uh, suspended the prison ministry indefinitely. Uh, <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> that ain't saying it's still funny. That ain't where we at now. That is that is not the direction this church is going. This is indefinite. Indefinite. We just, we just mail the Bible lessons. Yeah. We don't take them personally. <laughs> we yeah, ever since Nico Jenkins, we ain't going back. Nope, no sir. We ain't going back. No, no. All right. So those are the announcements as follows. Please govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> Obey your ushers and always respect your pastor because your pastor is still ready. Huh? <laughs> Girl, it's been a rough day. Just ignore me. What, what <laughs> are you? Rough, you? rough day. What no, are she... The wind been winded what? and the crow's been crowing. It's just been a rough day. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <It's been rough. laughs> The wind been winding and the crows been crowing. Okay. Um, we had a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in social media, a lot of stuff in the news. Uh, so, you know, we could talk about that, just keep going, but we're not. We're just going to hit on a few things. One, uh, we have to talk about this. One, I, and I, we cannot ignore it. Um, A lot of conspiracy theories, and we'll have to go into a whole nother show about what our what our theories are. But Brian Laundry, the remains of Brian Laundry were found in the forest, in a part of the forest where they had tromped and skipped, skedaddled, walked, picnicked, and everything, right on top of where they supposedly found this man's remains. Right, and yet, y'all found him. His parents found him. Y'all had Dog the Bounty Hunter, Deputy mm -hmm. Dog, uh, Pinkerton, the mm -hmm. Long Ranger. Uh, uh, Y'all had um, Sounder. Sounder. Everybody was out there. Ricky Ticky Tommy. Everybody was out there <laughs> looking, for this, <laughs> looking for this man. And nobody found him but his parents. I. Found him right you think there. his parents really? Mm, I, I'm side eyeing his parents big time. Now I'm not saying they didn't took their boys' remains out there and spread them around. I ain't saying that. But something's going on. Oh, most and definitely. The thing is, I don't even care about him. I'm not gonna say I don't. You know, rest in peace to the family. But it's not on my, you know, not on my radar, Brian Landry. Because now they're gonna drag the story all the way out. And now we ain't even talking about the uh, yeah, talking I mean, about old girl, mm -mm. the dearly departed. But supposedly they done found this man stuff. Did did they say what kind of uh, what state the, his his remains were in? Well, okay, so they're saying that they just found like bones, but that's that math is not mathing. because a decomposition takes months. A complete decomposition takes month you're in florida it is humid all the time in florida apparently he would have had to be covered with some brush or something so that would have helped with stopping decomposition i'm thinking you know because it's not exactly well they got animals out there yeah but his body wasn't completely exposed or you would have found him because like i said they trumped and picnicked and everything on the top of this man they, i don't know they, 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 seven times. they being secretive and he the killer. I mean, this how long? Did he Maybe he killed himself right after he yeah. left his mom's house. When I can't. If he can't did, be. if he did, why I found him? If he did kill himself in that spot, why didn't you guys find him? Well, you know Pretty they quick. got anacondas and pythons and and. She and then, so he killed himself and dragged himself from wherever the actual death site was and then to where he is because I don't believe that he died in that spot uh, girl I don't know alright we're going to move past uh, yeah I don't even know Brian and Gabby. it's too uh, much it, it's a lot it's a lot it's dominated the media um, a lot of lives that's what it is yeah it's a lot so we're going to I just have we just have to mention that alright so right. what we really want to talk about before we get to rolling dough Linda. is a 61-year-old man marries his 18-year-old goddaughter like a week after she turns 18. 
they go on social media defending themselves. He says that other young women, young girls are jealous of her. Sir, you are not hot dad 61. You are no. hot steaming mess at 61. Okay, and so no in the least. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah. He got some some rusty golds in his mouth. And, and he wear with them old pantsuits where it's just the shirt and the pants. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> the Easter ones. The ones you can be. Yeah. They've been, he been, he been grooming the hell out of her for a long time. Even when they were talking about when she ran away when she was 14, the first thought I thought was, oh, she, she ran to him. And he over there posted. He can help me Maybe find that's when she got pregnant by him. She, she got pregnant when she was 15. She had 15. to give birth when she was 15 because the baby's two. And she barely just turned 18 like a week week prior to them getting married. Um, so you could, you could you know, say, you know, she's 18, but he groomed her because he, he didn't just marry her at 18 because he just met her. He married her at 18 because he's been grooming that baby for the entire time. It is appalling to see the side-by-side -side pictures of him holding her as a toddler. In it? And then in their nuptial photo. I'm like, no. And it's now improved none over the years. No, he looks exactly the same hot mess. This and, and then she speaks like someone that's groomed. I mean, I'm 18. I'm legal now. Talking so, about we jealous of him. We he, jealous. He, 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 take he, care he of me. She got a new car. Well, she got a car that's paid off. Girl. Baby, my car is paid off too. No, but he she got all this got money car. and all this stuff. And y'all just mad because he gave me money. And I'm like, boy, bless a little hard. And then we mad. The younger women are jealous of him. Baby, no, we ain't. Mm -mm. No. Like I said, you wear the shirt with the pantsuit. The Shirt matching pants. Listen, if I'm going to date a 60 year old, he needs to look like Denzel. He needs to be Denzel 60. He needs to be um, yeah. a 60 year old. He doesn't have to be a Denzel, but he damn sure has to look better than him. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrible. It's, 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 it's really bad. And Even when he kissed her, she just looking like, Whoa. like she was like, she she'll she'll figure it out she'll figure it out well right now he he's all you know protected she don't i know she got a full-time job she said that to us and we and my we go everywhere together yeah you're gonna go everywhere together because he's trying to make sure that nobody try to roll up on you but she's beautiful she's a pretty very pretty girl so i was like oh he's gonna make sure he keep her ass trap right there in a minute everybody about to start breaking down and he already Baby, it's already broken down and he's got four other children, small children that she Yes, raised. small children. Why is he 61 with small children? Because Who else that? I'm wondering the children's mother, the, you know, their mother, how young is she? She probably had to, to leave and, and uh, leave him because he was too controlling and abusive. Uh, they're definitely younger because he said, I'm not the only person who dates younger women. This isn't abnormal. That's where he's at. Disgusting. No, he's Our not girl. the only one who dates younger women. And to be honest, I don't necessarily have a problem with the older man, younger woman, older woman, younger man. I don't have a problem with. What I do have a problem with is if you are have known my child for a long time, and then all of a sudden you're with my kid. How long Sleeping with the mama. Him? The mama she used was, to date him. They were sleeping together. They used to date. So is that why you were messing with the mama? Because you're trying to figure out because she was 14 when that happened, when the when he was dating the mom. So is that what you were doing? She got pregnant. But I'm saying he knew her from the baby from birth. He's her godfather. So my thing is, how long have you been watching this child? Is, Thank you. When did this grooming start? When did were you molesting this child as a young child? Because you did molest her if she was 15. I don't care what you said. That was molestation. But yeah, we're molesting is. her Probably as a, a, a preteen or as a as a young child. What were you doing to her? 
And my thing is, if you can bring up R. Kelly on 20-year-old charges, if you can bring up, if you can sue Bill Cosby on 40-year-old charges, you can damn sure sue this man. You got, they should, they should be able to pursue criminal charges against this dude, because this is just nasty. It's just nasty. I don't, I don't understand. This is why we need um, the one to build the fun. <laughs> I'm keeping this in because this is exactly why we need y'all to go and donate to the building fund at uh, money sign BLK cough coffee crime because our equipment is wonky y'all it's just it's just it ain't right it ain't it ain't right amen mm -hmm. me and Jackie in 1988 yeah <laughs> what me and Jackie so. in 1988. You you above us a little bit. Well, come on, come on in the room then. Come on in the room. Come on <laughs> in the room, yes. All right, we just gonna praise it anyhow. And that ain't um, right. See, I'm spending all this time. Okay, so while I'm doing this, we can still talk about. Okay, so saw this on. Was it neighborhood talk on Instagram? Ready? I uh, remember. I've seen it in two places. It was either, uh, I think it was Neighborhood Talk. Um, a woman in China goes on a blind date with a guy named Mr. Lu. That's how he's being identified as Mr. Lu. She brings on this blind date. The blind date was set up by Mr. Lu's mother because she wanted him to meet some nice young women. Okay. Well, this nice young woman brought a wingman on her first date which is not uncommon to bring someone on a blind date, you know, but she bought 23 someones on this blind date. To see what? how good she was. 23 other people showed up with her on her blind Holy date. Shit. 23 people. And they what? The bill, she said that we should just yes. That's my secretary to see. Was it neighborhood talk or was it um? Is it the neighborhood talk or shade or shade room? She said she saw it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, it's 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 on Instagram and also, apparently also on Facebook. But yes, twenty three other people she brought on this blind date to test his generosity. He said that he agreed to, you know, after even after the, all these people showed up, he agreed to pay for the two of them. They racked up a bill of 30, the equivalent of $3,000. Hell no. And he left. As he should. He shot deuces at her and left. Now, one of the comments was somebody was saying that this is trifling, this is crazy. Um, but one of the comments I've seen was a guy, a, a, a guy who said, well, what if it was, you know, is it, you know, the other way around or something? He said, like, women do this all the time. And I'm like, I've heard of women doing things like, you know, can I get my plate for my mom or, you know, my friend came. But I've never heard of you bringing 20, a whole. Um, you a whole subway to your date. <laughs> the contents of a whole subway car. You're like, you know what, y'all hungry? Come with me. <laughs> like, I Take have never away. heard of that. I've never heard anything like that. 23 people to test his general. This is a blind date. Like, you, you've never even met this guy. Messed up, man. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. I would have left for sure. I don't know. He did. He did. He did. He mm -hmm. left out with the bill. Yeah, yeah, niggas. Excuse me. I'll be scared. <laughs> We're leaving that in there, too. <laughs> be scared of y'all people. Yeah. All right. So, um, being that season of... Oh, I have a correction. I need to make a correction. Oh. Last episode i said something a word i said a word it's a gaelic word and i said it all wrong it is spelled f-a-m-h-a-i-n it's a gaelic word and of course 
with it being spelled, you would say Samhain. It is not Samhain. Um, it is called Samhain. So it's actually Halloween, like the Harvest Festival, all of that stuff. But it's a dru Druid um, observance, holiday, whatever. So I said Samhain, and it's actually Samhain. And it bothered me for days because I knew that I said it wrong. So if anyone is Wiccan or anything like that, or if you are Druid and you follow, I, I apologize because I said y'all were wrong in All right, moving right along. Um, this being almost Halloween, all Hallow's Eve, Saturday, all of that. Um, we're talking about some murders or whatever, or things that happen during Halloween. Well, this didn't necessarily happen Halloween, but this the the movie that it came from, you would naturally watch on Halloween, which is the Exorcist. I want to say that The Exorcist is still came out in what 1972? 72 or 3. Is one of the scariest movies ever filmed. I know some people are unaffected by it. I am not unaffected by The Exorcist. I have seen The Exorcist, the original. I've seen the one from 1990. I've seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, the Exorcism of Emily Rose was. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I watched that in the middle of the afternoon and I was like, mm, mm, just saying, still ain't, it's still ain't for me. I'm not going to watch it again. Just tell you that now. It's That's a little too much for me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> quiet, too... I don't watch scary movies. Yeah, and then you, you definitely ain't going to watch that. I live really? my life. You what? I live my life right. <laughs> <laughs> So watching scary movies and living your life wrong? Yeah, no. Are you what? Don't mess around with me. I started watching scary movies when I was a kid because I have two older brothers and they were unaffected by it. Or maybe they weren't, but they liked them. So, of course, being the lowest one on the show, I had to watch them. Maybe uh, they probably were scared. Um... But they faked it very well. One of the movies that my mom always refused to rent from the local video store was The Exorcist. <clears throat> I'm going to tell y'all right now, black people really, really don't play around with demons and bring them back. We be trying to put them where they go. And the yeah, we got present day demons to deal with. Yeah, we got real life stuff to deal with. But we spiritually... I think that we know that they're there, but we're not really trying to be in touch with them in our house. You know what I'm saying? We well, yeah, the Bible has has instances where, you know, when he sent them, uh, the demons into the pigs and they ran off the cliff. I mean, there, there's there's examples in the Bible. Right. But I'm saying uh, there there are. But I'm just saying in general, um, in the diaspora, we we generally believe that things like this happen. But The Exorcist is actually based off of a true story. Um, a young man in the 40s was apparently possessed by demons and his local priest was called in and petitioned to the Vatican to do an exorcism. You have to be trained by the Vatican as, ca as a Catholic. I'm not Catholic, but as a Catholic, you have to be trained to do an exorcism because you could kill someone. There are plenty of instances, recent instances, where people have done exorcisms on people and they kill the supposed possessed person, either through malnutrition or through uh, blunt force trauma, all kinds of waterboarding, all kinds of things that they do to someone who's possessed to try to get the demon out. And most of them end up dying. So you're supposed to be like highly trained. Well, in this case, Randy doesn't believe that this is true, but I believe this story is true. You and do. I also ask Brand, why it's always the old priest that comes and not the Baptist or the Kojic or Pentecostal or whatever. But I said because if it was one of us, we tell him go sip, mm -hmm. get a sip of water, and go to bed, <laughs> go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> it would be as easy as that. And when Brandy and I come from a 
two different religious traditions. So in my religious tradition, it would be a little bit more kind of, kind of like the exorcism, but not so much as you're in the house and you're doing but a lot of praying and calling that demon out or calling that, That's the same that for me too. spirit out inside a church. And I've seen, and I, I don't know if, if it's authentic, but I've seen this happen in church. Right. Yep. I've seen it too. You know, I've seen it too. Yes. I, I'm not saying that it, it's all fake. I'm just saying this story with old exorcist boy is fake. Uh, oh, uh, the long one? You think mm -hmm. that's you think it's fake? Yeah. Why? Just I mean, I just I just think it was fake. I don't think it was, and it's definitely not all that they put on it in the movie. Well, of course, that movie is going to add some in there in order to to will it more. You know, bring it get bring the audience make make the mu right. movie. You know, stand out a little bit more, but but I'm not saying that I don't believe it. I, I've seen it happen. When I was in college, I've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that I don't, I don't, I don't believe, but I just think this story. Okay. So the way this story goes. And then also growing up too, we were like, if you weren't qualified to do this, you don't need to be messing around and playing around. Exactly. Trying to pull out something. Cause then the next thing you know, it might come into you. Right. right? That is one thing that as people of African descent, we are very careful what we do with spirits and how we treat them. Um, if you are not qualified, just like we ask for prayer warriors, we ask for, and I don't know in other, anybody else's community, but we ask for prayer warriors because these are people who have been tried, tested, and made it through the battle. I need these people to pray for me. And we also watch who prays for us because I don't know who you pray to or what you're praying for. So uh, we're very <laughs> careful. <laughs> We're very careful about these things. And so an untrained person cannot pray over us. Um, because like Randy said, you you don't know what you're going to bring out. And if after it is out, if you can deal with it, it might right. be you that now has houses this thing, this, this negative energy, if we want to just break it down to be really simple, a negative presence or negative energy. You don't know what that is and what it's going to do to you. But it seems in these cases of exorcism that these people don't be trained well. Like y'all just you go right on in with the Bible. Try to test it, like you said. They just, see. just go right on up in there. Yeah. Don't don't don't. They you know, took a little priest classes, but they they ain't qualify. Right. So okay. So this is what happened in the forties, where this boy um, they lived in Maryland. And a uh, young teenage boy, and he, his name for all of his purposes, they call him, um, Ro you can find him as Robbie Mannheim or Roland Hunkler or Hunkler. Um, but they were, they were calling him Roland Doe for a long time to protect his identity. Um, he lived in Maryland. He had this great aunt who he just adored, just loved her. But she was something of a spiritualist. She did tarot, things like that. She um, did that. Spiritualists back in the day, he opened kind of, yes, uh, spiritualists back in the day were kind of entertainment, you know what I mean? <laughs> What'd you say, Brittany? I, <laughs> <up. laughs> I just say she opened that door. That's all I right. Ooh, so, You know, they were used as entertainment, um, you know, seances, trying to connect with lo departed loved ones and stuff like that. We don't you know. When they well, did, they did. They go. I see you on the second on the second resurrection. Yeah, they they go. So Until, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna be calling you. Up. No, no, <laughs> I I don't. The Lord say they did. I believe they did. I revere my ancestors and my elders who have crossed over, and you know, I will try to call on wisdom that I know that they they have. But I don't really want to see them sitting in my favorite chair when I get home. To me, they are dead. They in that ground, buried over dead. That's it. Like, that, that's, that's it. Period. I want to be no to, to, you know, but I don't <laughs> see you. I don't want to talk to you. Nobody calling me while yeah. I'm sleeping. 
Well, we're all washing clothes talking about what you do. No, nah, I'm not. No, nah, I'm not trying to have none of that. No. So um, his his aunt's name was Harriet, and um, she taught him a bunch of stuff, how to use a Ouija board, how to open the door, basically. Um, and the board itself, I will say this, the Ouija board itself is not the thing. It's not the bad thing. It's what you do with it. You are telling me that family ain't saved. Because... because the Ouija board is just to is just French for yes and Norwegian for yes, just Ouija. That's all it is. It's just yes. yes. I don't mess around with it. I don't play with it because I was taught as a kid you don't you don't mess around. Actually, I bought one home one time. Does, does your mama know? Girl, that thing went right back outside. Yeah, because what the hell? Who put it outside? Your mama or your grandma? My grandma put it outside. Oh, you know your grandma threw that out. Did you get a whooping? No, I didn't get a whooping. And then I didn't know that I didn't know what it was. You know, it was the kids at school, you know, little white kids at school, you know, don't let the little white kids get you beat up. Um, and I brought it because they had it. And my grandmother, we didn't break it because you can't, you don't do that. You take it. She said, you take it back. You take it back. Hell no. I said, you can pick it up on the side of the road in front of the house. Call them people and tell them, put it all the way to the street. Call no, them. you don't, you don't want it to break. We don't want to break a Ouija board. Mm -mm. I ain't going to have no reason to break one. Because right, I ain't going to break the street, And whoever broke it got to deal with it. I don't know how the, the chain of command goes with it, with a Ouija board. Because the last person who touched it or the person who brought it to the house. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't take no know. chances. Right. But you know you don't break it. But anyway. Well, it don't matter because it ain't got no power over my personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. We're not going to start. Denise McDaniels, we're going to start right now. McKinley, McKinley Daniels. McKinley, we're not going to start right now. All right. Daniels, for Daniels. All right. So the aunt, Harriet, dies in 1949. Right after she dies, Roland starts to go through some strange, some strange stuff. Um, he starts hearing things in his bedroom at night. It's something scratching at the walls, um, water dripping from the pipes and then the walls. And can you just imagine, like, you see <clears> the <throat> water just pouring down your walls? That's, and that's why I was asking BW, like, does she not believe? Because he wasn't the only witness to this. Like, everyone is witnessing this. Everyone. Well, in my research, I've heard people say that he was a good boy. And some say that he was a prankster and he used to sick his dog on folks in the neighborhood. So what does that have to do with what? Yeah, a, yeah, a prankster. It, yeah, he was a prankster. Yeah, he could have been well, sick in the, sick all in the duck. You think he, he could have made the wa walls pour down with water. Oh, they just got bad plumbing. <laughs> but he could have been rattling his bed and doing all that stuff. Oh, Movies oh, bad bad plumbing. They got they got rodents in <laughs> their walls. Scratching all on it, which is plausible. But we're gonna. And the bird more. got in my attic and was just was just doing his thing. Woke me up one morning. So I mean, there there's there's stuff that I just don't believe this story of this boy and these people for years. So you think okay. he carried this out for years? Well, he right. didn't carry it for how many years? Do you so say no, that it was years? Okay, so were, right now, after Aunt Harry dies, they're in Maryland, right? They're right. they're in Maryland. It happens there. They go to the doctor, the psychiatrist, which, you know, psychiatry is a new uh, medical field at the time. They go to their local, they weren't Catholic, they were Lutheran. They went to the local Lutheran minister. Nobody could help. Um, then uh, they go to the Jesuits, so, which is, you know, a sect of Catholicism or whatever. Uh, they have this guy named Father Albert Hughes. Um, he asked the Vatican if he could do the exorcism. So they start the exorcism in February. So a month after after Harry dies, they start the exorcism process. So very quickly, this escalates after she dies. So none of this happened before she died. It's just when Harry dies. So who, what is what is it? You know, like what do, did she not go? Is the door open? Something else come in? 
So they strap the boy down, which is common in exorcisms to strap someone down, which is very dangerous. Um, and the priest does his Lord tells you. Right. Which that ain't enough prayer for me. So during this no, you need to bring in all the prayer warriors, the de all the deaconess and, all and, the, and the elders. Everybody. And where's the oil? They ain't got no oil. That's why they, they ain't got no doing, oil. They just be doing yeah, they just doing this with that water. Now no. you know you get lathered down with some oil. Yeah. So um, you get lathered down. During this exorcism, um <laughs> one of the y'all stupid. One of the springs on the bed comes out from the bed and hits the priest in the face and slashes his face open. Game over, exorcism done, they don't complete it. Yeah, he definitely wasn't qualified. So, right, he, he was qualified. Was a nice guy, though. They said he was a real nice guy. He gave to the needy. And those, mm -hmm. you know, he gave to those in need. He was just a, a good guy. It didn't work out well for him. But he wasn't qualified. No. Um, so a couple of days after the, ex uh, the exorcism, um, you know, uh, Roland starts to experience webs and lesions and stuff on his body. The word Lewis is L O U I S appears on his body. So his parents think that that word means that they should go to St. Louis, Missouri and seek help there. Hmm. I, I don't understand how they got that, but they had a relative who lived in St. Louis, so they're like, okay, maybe this means we should go there and we can get help there. So they moved to St. Louis. Um, I this it, that was such a stretch for me. Like I don't, I don't know how they got there. So um, they go to St. Louis. They they get involved with some more Jesuit priests. Um, they go to this is March. So from January to March, they moved to St. Louis. And they were talking about the house. That's why they thought yeah. it was the house. They didn't know what it was, and they and when they once they saw that Louis, they're like, "We need to go to St. Louis. Maybe we can get help there." So they go. Um, they got the boy on the mattress. The mattress is moving violently, and the boy is going through convulsions. He's got scratches. Of spontaneously appearing on his body they don't know what's happening and these are the same things that were happening at the house in america so you could say that he brought so, witnesses with him all the witnesses that was there all their stories was the same pretty much so what happened in st louis is the exact same thing that happened in, maryland. Happened in maryland so his parents could corroborate the story that he had all these webs on his body and that bed was doing the same thing when those priests came in there to, to pray and do all this this exorcism. Well, so no his way. parents would at least be able to corroborate the story that this happened. Yeah, no. um, so there was, the parents don't need to do all this extra shit. They don't who? need scratching the walls and, and bouncing up the, 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 the bed and doing all that. Who don't need it? They don't need to be doing all that. Who does? Who? Huh? <laughs> Who doesn't need to be doing all that? Did y'all uh, say they're they doing it? Them, they thought it was poltergeist, the demon poltergeist. She said they did it. Like they're you doing think it. the parents are doing this? No, I'm saying okay. that I just this story has just got a lot of holes to me. And I'm saying if, if the demon was gonna do something by this time, they don't need to do all that, all that show. What show? So, so, so you, do you, do you have an understanding of how demons, how demons behave? Let them just talk to you then. Let's cut all that out and have a conversation. <laughs> you think the demon just go act special, like going to calm down just for him? No, I'm not going to say they're going to calm down, but go ahead and sit you there. You know, I'm sure he was, you're not going to talk to him. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> they are it's talking like, to him. My name is. <laughs> the, the, they're saying the response to them trying to understand the demon, that trying to get their attention. That this is he's, he's, that's did. his response. His response is like, I don't want to tell. Yeah, this is the reaction that they get when the priests go in there to start the exorcism is because because they ain't qualified. They want to talk to somebody who's qualified. 
Can, can we just move forward and okay? Go on, I'm just Ooh, saying. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't. So apparently they do Ooh. demons do come out verbally because he screams and he has the violent outbursts. Um, when he's trying to go to bed, he would enter like he would talk in these guttural voices. And if you guys listened or watch the documentary that I put in the group chat about Annalise Michelle from Germany. Yeesh. If you want to hear something eerie, and Brandy, you said you wanted to hear the demons talk. Listen and watch. I didn't say I wanted to hear. Okay. But I know you talk. Okay, well, they talk through I heard Annalise. It. Have you, have you, they talk through Annalise. Well, I didn't listen to all of it because I was home by myself and I didn't have enough lights on. Okay. Yeah, they listen to him at least. So he starts, you know, talking in these guttural tones and all this stuff. Um, things in the room would start to fly around. Like anytime the boy was in a room, something was happening and going on. Um, and if there was some sort of um, sacred object or something to do with, you know, religion or something like the typical crucifix or something like that, something, you know, that was, um, you know, holy water, anything like that, he would react violently to it immediately. So it's like if you had a cross or something, he would see it, then he would react violently. Um, of course, if you've seen the Exorcist movie, all of this is in there because the author took this story and planted it right into the middle of his novel. Of course, he added some stuff, but this, everything that happened to Roland Doe is what happens to the girl. In Except that. the head spinning around, that didn't happen. Right. So of course, like I said, that he took some some uh some poetic license. So uh let's see here. He gets he has the number 10 on his body, um, with like the, the letter X, which the priests are thinking it has something to do with the number 10, which I'm not sure what religiously what that has to do with anything, the number 10. I got the Ten Commandments, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Um let's see, let's see here. <laughs> So they, oh, they think that he was possessed by 10 demons because of the X appearing on his body. He would have lines and stuff up here, like snake down his body, like veins or like um, like lightning bolts go down his body, like just red lines and stuff like that. Um, basically, he would shout at the priest. He would curse them, all of those things. They took him to an institute um, and he would keep, keep doing the same thing. They would lay rosaries, crucifixes, all kinds of things on his body. Um, and at some point, they did they they start praying. It was a bunch of priests, they start praying over him. And at some point, they call on Saint Michael. <clears throat> um, what is Michael the patron saint of? I don't know. I don't know what they think Saint Michael is. I'll look that up. Um, so no, they call on St. Michael to, look it up. to come in and help them um, win back Roland Soul. Oh, I mean, this is Catholicism, so I'm like, why would they call St. Michael? But right. they're Catholics. So. But, so, yeah, they think he's the uh, archangel. Michael, uh, Michael the archangel, that who St. Michael is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they call him Michael the arch, the St. Michael. Um, and about, you know, some couple minutes go by and Roland, all of a sudden he's very lucid and he says, he's gone. So after they take him, they take him to an institute. Now all this happens from January when he's in, in um, Maryland, February, they call for the first exorcism, March, he's in St. Louis. By April, they move him to an institute, the Alexian Brothers Institute, and they continue to do all these exorcisms, keep track down, whatever. And then also in April, they exercise the demon and it's gone. Exercise. And according to the two brief, the two priests, uh, Bowdern and Halloran, after that, everything stopped. It's just gone. Everything stopped. Brandy, your face is like. So I have a question. I'm really curious. What holes are in this story that I'm not saying that. But really quickly, let me tell you about okay. Saint Mike. He's considered uh, the champion of justice, a healer of the sick, and the guardian of the church. 
And he is a warrior that is in the battle for good versus evil. So that's his representation in church. Okay. Thank you. So with this story, Brandy, what is so unbelievable about this story? I, I know. Now, Annalise Keating, not Annalise Keating, that's the show. Annalise What's going on? <laughs> Annalise, Annalise Michelle. Michelle. Now, she may have had some, some stuff going on. But I also think it went too long, and the girl, I, well, I don't know. Y'all got to look up the end lease, but that's a possibility. But this story, I just, I don't know. It just, just sounds flim flam. It's the same story to me. It's just, it's, it sounds flim flam. I don't Where? know. How it sounds Where? Flim -flam to me. Where? So okay, so let's start off. He's in fact <laughs> very close with his spiritualist auntie. She dies, and all of a sudden, you know, he's something. Something's wrong. So, you, are you you're saying that because of the conflicting stories about he was a good boy, and then things are saying that he was a bully, then that makes it unbelievable. I don't. They just said he liked to do it. There were there, there was just certain thing. Now I don't know about the dripping, and I don't know about no scratching in the walls, but. Like all that bed, making them bed noises and just acting. I, I mean, I don't know. It just, it just seems like some flim flam to me. It just seems like flim flam. I don't. But know that's why. the same thing that happened in the case of Annalise and Michelle. Well, I don't know, and I think Annalise would have lived if their, them folks wouldn't have starved her to death, and she had all that malnutrition and dehydration. But, but she was refusing to eat. Well, then at that point, if your child is skinny and bone is talking about this is the third day and you ain't took them to the hospital. I guess because they are afraid of it, I guess, like, you know, maybe it being a problem, people not believing what they're saying. Um, well, my thing with that is your child I mean, she was eating. She just wouldn't eat food. She was eating. She died of malnutrition and dehydration. Mm hmm. At what point do you take a kid to the hospital? Even if she did have a demon or whatever in her, at what point do you take well, her to the hospital? That, you know, and to, to speak to that, her parents, as well as the priest or the psychiatrist, I think it was, they were all brought up on criminal charges because of that. Mm -hmm. So they all served time because the authorities had that same question. Like, regardless of what she's going through, you never sought medical help for her. Yeah. Um, so yes. And and again, in modern exorcism cases, that's a thing. Um, in South America, oh my God, when did I read this? Maybe three or four years ago. Um, there was a guy, was it South America? I think it was South America. Also it happened in Australia recently. Um, did an exorcism and... The family asked for the exorcism. The family asked for it. But the girl died in his care. But the authorities are saying that she could have actually lived if you had given her proper medical care. So Is that the one that they tried to reborn her and had her in a had her in a, a tied up in a, a blanket or something to to Make I her don't recall if that's I don't and recall. She ended up getting uh what do you call it? Su suffocated. I don't recall if that's oh. but I mean that's just you know going along the, the lines of torture basically. You're torturing yeah. these people and they beat them because they're like they're beating on their chest and all these things trying to get the demon to come out. So at a certain point, those doing the exorcism, they become criminals. Because they're they're not qualified. That's right. That's right. They ain't qualified. They're not qualified. Who ever That's heard right. of beating on beat? You go beat on them in the Bible. They just called them out, and they came on out and went to the pigs, and the pigs went over the thing. Well, Why okay. they be beating folks? And of and course, we are not living in biblical times, so it's different. <laughs> Apparently, it ain't that much different. This boy got his bed hopping up and down, and the girl. With the demons talking to the to the priest and stuff. <laughs> you can't say it. Like, I mean, no, I'm I'm having a legion of demons to say a legion. Having this conversation. Why the old boy had a ten? He had a legion. Of what? 
a legion. Can I mute you right now? For <laughs> <laughs> real. Yeah. Can't have you. Do you all remember Bob Larson? He used to be in the early nineties. My mama used to listen to him, and he was always always talking to demons all the time. I don't know who Bob Larson is. Cast him out. I don't know who Bob Larson is. My mom used to do that all the time, I remember. Yeah. Bob Larson had flaming red hair. But anyway, I don't Ooh. know. Something about this extra story, I don't know. I don't know. It, it just, I don't know. Just something just, just, just don't seem like a, it. And it's been told all over the, you know, it's been told so many times the story going to change. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying that all the details because I, I wasn't there. Um yeah. I'm saying that it's it it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is true. I mean he could have been, I'm saying he could have been possessed. He could be, he could have. But I'm just saying, I don't know. It sounds like some flim flam and this telling the story 85 times and then you add stuff on it every time. Like, mm. who's adding stuff too to much on it? Who's they adding put stuff? extras on it, is what I'm saying. They put extras. Who? Who? The folks telling the stories over and over and over again. Well, I mean, that happens with everything. I mean, we've watched documentaries of this same subject from different networks, from different creators, and every single time, some of the details are going to be different. So that's what um, I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm saying, that's, that's true with everything. Then you could look, go take a story tonight. Watch CNN give that story. Watch Fox give that story. Watch CBS give that story. It is not the same story. It depends on but who's saying that saying story was so I just think it, it was kind of sensationalized. I think they put more on the story. Now the boy could, I mean, he was messing around with that Ouija board with his auntie. It's possible. Yeah, of course they're gonna put extra time to sensationalize it. It's someone saying they're possessed by a demon. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna put, they're gonna, they're gonna sugar that up a little bit. I mean, that's just, that's just it makes for a great story. So every time the, 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 it's printed but, in the newspaper. I'm yeah, gonna say every time, every time the story, every time the story is retold, it, they're it's adding up on it. They're, but yeah, unless we originally talk to the original people who originally did it. It's going to be a added in every time someone touches something got added. Yeah, for my thing, all this extra stuff like the bed and the trap, all this. That stuff, part, that part has never changed. Yeah. The bed all up. That has never changed. <laughs> Those details of of what was happening in that house and what was happening to his body. Those details have never changed. And my thing is. If there was something going on in the house, if there was some sort of negative energy, I do believe that energy can move anything. Um, you, we can't explain. I think that part of this is science. We can't really explain everything and why everything happens. We see things. We go outside and see something phenomenal in the sky. You can't explain why it happened like that. Why did this happen? So. If something was in that house, if something, the energy was so great, two different pieces of energy going against each other was so great in him and in that house or wherever environment that he was, yeah, I can move things. I absolutely believe that. Yeah. I don't think he was in the earth spinning like this in circles, no. but I do believe but, <laughs> that, that, that there can be a force and a power that can have that ability. I mean, if that can, I mean, do you believe in ghosts? Me? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, that's probably like why you the people it. walking all around the house and stuff. No, 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 no. Just any kind of Left evil spirit. spirit. Evil spirits have enough power to shape things. They can move stuff. Even, even you know that that can happen. They can move things. They can they can make things happen that you can't explain. How did they turn on a light? How did they move a chair? So I don't think that's too far fetched. I mean, again, I don't think it was like a spin, yeah. but I do think something well, was enough to make him feel like for it to be a situation where he may have been elevated a little bit 
or something happened to it was that extreme. I do believe that it could happen. And then that's another. And then we're looking at other religions. And as a Christian, you understand, because I understand that you're not we are taught you don't play with the mother religion. You don't play like that because they do things that we don't do. And it, it can open up doors to things because we do things so different. So with us being Christians, you know, I guess that's why I'm kind of like, you know, I don't know what they were playing with over there. You know, that's why we stay over here. So that's why I keep saying he would have came and got grease. He would have even went through this. He would have got grease oh, yeah. down with the spirit. You know, they put the hands on there. They get the hollering at you, you know, speaking in tongue and, and whatnot. He would have been all right in one day. He would have been okay. And he got okay. the right word. But also, also, as a person who was raised in a Christian faith, what I have learned as I've gotten older is that as a Christian, there's no possible way that you do not believe in the supernatural. You can say what? You you can't say that as a Christian that you don't believe in the supernatural. That it doesn't exist. No, I ain't, I ain't said that. That's what I'm saying. So if you, the, I'm not talking specifically to you, I'm just saying that if you are a Christian, even though that we have certain things that you do and you don't do, you know that it's there. Because it's already built into the fabric of you being a Christian. That suspension of disbelief is already there. It was that Aunt Harriet. No doubt it was Aunt Harriet. Bringing that old boy. Let, Let me tell you, when I was a kid, um, my uncle, my mother's baby brother, passed away in a car accident. And very sudden, of course, very tragic. And there used to be a clock in the kitchen right above the stove. I mean, above the sink. So my uncle would come home every day around between 3 and 3.30, may, may, mostly around 3.30 every day. And you could hear his car, you could hear his music, like blocks and blocks away. So the dog, would, she knew what time it was because, you know, she would either hear it. So she waited for him for forever, for months. She waited for him at 3.30. But anyway, besides the dog, the clock on that wall every day at 3.30 would be on the floor. Every day. You would plug it, it would be unplugged and on the floor in the middle of the kitchen. It will plug it back in, put it back. And then the next day, mm -hmm. that clock was on the floor. It wasn't simply that it fell from the nail because the nail was still there. It would be unplugged. Nobody would be home, whether you were home or not, that clock would be on the floor until my grandmother got rid of the clock. I gotta go outside. And it was like, well, what is that? And so at a certain point, it wasn't that it was even scary. It was just, why is the clock on the floor? Why is the clock on the floor? And then in the typical Black woman fashion, my grandmother was like, boy, leave my clock alone. And it was her, no, 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 not kidding you, her acknowledging that that was him was enough. There was nothing else that happened after that. She did get rid of the clock, but the, there was a medicine cabinet that would always be open. Like, in the kitchen, there was a there was a cabinet, and I don't know what, there was just miscellaneous stuff in that cabinet. It was just built into the wall, and the door would always be open. Close the door, the door would be open. Close it, and it would just open back. But it didn't do that before, and didn't do it after. And so she acknowledged, boy, you know, like, yeah. and then was gone. So sometimes I think, that there are like are a benevolent presence or something like that, and you need to acknowledge it. Even an evil or <laughs> benevolent presence, you need to acknowledge it. Like, okay, so I know you guys have seen paranormal activity. Yeah. Have you seen it, Brandy? No, because mm -hmm. I don't want she like that. Okay. So paranormal activity came out what 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So Jackie, do you remember in paranormal activity? I'm scared. I'm scared. There was this playing, oh, they, playing with, they played with something, something akin to a Ouija board. They brought something into the house. Mm -hmm. They brought something friends, yeah. up and, and 
<laughs> what they didn't do, what I noticed in that movie is what they didn't do. They never acknowledged the presence of the thing. They never called it out. They right. never said to it. They never said to it, get out. Whatever right. you are, get out. You don't want that. You don't want the smoke, get out. They never said to, they never said that. They never acknowledged it. You know also, what? That is crazy. They never acknowledged it. They just they lived called with it. Lord. They called they did not they call it. An acknowledgement is a very important part because I've had an encounter. So, I, and I knew the way in order to save my children was that I had in my mind, uh, in my mind, the apartment we stayed in had a lot going on when we sleep. And my daughter got to the point where she said, can you shut my door? Because a man stands in the door. So I said, okay. And then at nighttime, I would feel weird. I would feel eerie. And so I said, okay, well, now it's getting to the point where you fucking with my kids. Now we got a problem. So it, it took me uh, showing no fear uh, in a dark black. I'm talking about so black, and I'm a chocolate woman. So I'm talking about so black, I can't see my hands. I can't see anything. And I had to stand there and don't and don't get it twisted because who got the oils is Jack. And I was rubbing out everything. And I have to stand in the middle of the hallway. And I said, I don't know who the f I had to talk to it like I needed him to understand or it to understand because it was getting to the point where Jermaine was scared. Their father, he'd be like, there's stuff going on. You can hear people walking up. You can hear stuff walking upstairs. So I was like, I don't know who you are, but you can't stay here. You got to get, up, get the fuck up out of her. And with and me bringing that presence, we never had a problem anymore. But I had, I knew that I had to tell it to go. If I didn't tell it to go, it was just going to kind of linger around there. So right. I understand. You do have to call it out and tell it to go. Like you have to make it go. Because if not, it's going to stay there. Right. That's just me, but I'm, but I, but I, you know, I be greasing stuff then. So. Yes. So it, it, it's you acknowledging, you're facing, and, and, and it's a fear because truly are we, are, if we're thinking with a scientific mind, maybe it's not there, but if we're thinking with a spiritual mind, it is there. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to sometimes acknowledge the thing that, that you're scared of. You have to acknowledge the thing, face it, put, put, you know, make it real so that you can address it. So in that movie, Paranormal Activity, they never did that. Yeah. They, like you said, Randy, they also never personally called Yahweh, Allah, what? Jah, uh, yeah. uh, the great, the uh, great spirit of the sky. They never called anything. They never called Buddha. They didn't call Brahman. They didn't call Yanessa, nothing. Nothing. I'm playing around. But they called. They called. Uh, um, remember, they called the, the the priest, and he walked through the door. Brady, this is the funniest part. The priest hit the door. He opened the door. He said, "Oh, I can't do it." <laughs> the priest said, uh, so, "And the people still stayed in the house." They the don't want to lose no money. They don't want to lose money, and they don't want to lose that. Don't please. If I call a priest to my house, and the priest says I can't go, he was a real priest. Because this is Hollywood we're dealing with. But it's a movie, Brandy. No. Oh, I, I don't watch no movies like that. So, <laughs> in the movie, the priest comes and he and he just... But if a priest comes to my house, he says, I can't Yeah, go. in the movie, I mean... I, I mean, the second he walked the in... Man there, he, was like, he was like, uh-uh. Oh, no. oh, I got to call my, my pastor at my church home. Yeah, with priest, pastor, whoever, <laughs> whatever, whoever he is, whoever he is, Bring says, the oil. I can't go in there. Then you already know, like, something is not right. Something is not right. But see, they moved into the house, and they didn't do this. And I don't know how many people outside of cult folk do this. When you move into a new space. You got to bless that space. You got to bless your space. Yeah, you got to anoint it. And part of blessing that space is acknowledging what has already been there needs to go. Hallelujah. Needs to go. And even in like an exorcism or a prayer, what are you saying in a prayer? Whatever exists in this body has to go. You have to go. Devil, you have to go. You got to go. Sickness, you got to go. You preaching that, man. Preaching. That is that is calling. Shut up, baby. That is calling up on the thing. Like you have to, you have. To. 
<laughs> Why did you lean forward? Because <laughs> you were saying a word right there. You was you were speaking that word. What's ever in your life, you gotta acknowledge and tell it. He gotta go. Gotta go. You were saying that word. <laughs> gotta go. I, I, I had to hold myself. Why, why, why are you making fun? I can't with you. And then you got this net over here laughing. Ooh, ooh, but, but, she not preaching. But what I'm, that's what, like, that's the whole, the whole, the whole thing about the exorcism and all this stuff, possession or whatever. I'm no, saying we, we, we need to go on home and have the choir start singing and do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But I'm saying, listen, listen. You know, that all the time. But is that true? You have to you have to name the thing. You have to call it out. And in none of these instances, I know that there was all these exorcisms and they're trying to start the stuff. They they didn't pray hard enough for me. They didn't pray hard enough. In in the movie The Exorcist, what did they say? The power of Christ compels you. Compels you. The power of Christ compels you to what? No, they didn't get the tongue. They get the tongue talking either. Get that tongue talking. To exercise the demon, they're reading from this book. And if the demon has a stronger presence at the time and gives them a push, like a spiritual push, they just they water, gotta, out of water damage, flipping they that gotta thing. start all over again. I'm like, y'all need to put that book down and just hit it. All on my hardwood floor is just, just but ain't called it. So did you walk through the no, you ain't got to make the course with me. Girl, one time I got anointed. This is when I was in the hospital. Pastor came, tried to anoint me. Girl, he put a glob on me. I mean, it was running in my eye, burning. But you can't move because, you know, he got his hand. All the other elders is around praying. And you like, Lord, I got to, I can't even pray with you because I got olive oil all in my eye. <laughs> did you feel the anointing, though? Oh, I'm, si I'm sitting. I'm yet here. I'm yet sitting before you. True, <laughs> but it still didn't stop that. My eye from <laughs> maybe he's in too much. Powerful, it's powerful. Are you too much? You know what? When I was growing up, when I would see Pompeian olive oil, I always called it blessed oil. I didn't know that you could actually cook with Pompeii olive oil. Oh, yeah. But, but when I was growing up, how? When I was growing up, I didn't know that because I always saw Pompeii um, olive and that oil. Thing with the red and, top. Yeah, red or the top. And I remember they had a bottle on her dresser. <laughs> and she would say, Go give me that blessing all. And you knew that you go get the Pompeii. So when I got older, <laughs> when I got older, bless it all. Go give me that blessed all. Um, when I got older, I saw it in the store. No? Girl, don't mess around and cook nothing with that bless oil. I have not. It will not. But it might come out fire. I ain't. It might. What if I'm having some extra pots and, I, and I'm cooking with the bless oil and it ain't work? Yeah, I thought that was just the, the anointing oil, too. Yeah. I didn't and know that. I didn't know until I seen that stuff. So. Then when I saw the stuff, I was like, oh. But then you have to go to the bank. <laughs> oil. Over the oil. Like it's just type of oil. Okay. Okay. I, I was not aware. I just thought that Pompeii when that that blessed oil. That red top Hallelujah. was just a thing for for blessed oil. That's that's all it was for. And then priests didn't have it. They didn't have no Pompeii. That's why they wanted it. No, they had some water. They had water, literally. Yeah, little water. water. Mm. And, and, we're, and we're not saying that the you know I hope we're not offending nobody. It's just that we seen you know maybe if the grease that came in since the oil since the water wasn't working maybe the oil could have possibly worked. You know we don't want nobody. They got a pastor from down the street. Yeah. Go get one of them old aunties that probably was uh working at one of them houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know the ones that got that, mm -hmm. that piece right here? Mm -hmm. Put the potato on. Mm -hmm. The one that just keep polishing the uh, mm -hmm. the, uh the, the banister. Rub yeah, stuff down with Crisco. Because mm -hmm. back then they was rubbing their stuff down with Crisco. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, knees, knees and elbows just as shiny. Smell like fried chicken. Put that little door in her head. Uh-huh. And a pair of Rance Allen's 40, uh, 45s. Big yep. tits. Big the ones, the ones that sit on her, uh, the ones that just sit on top of her tongue. When you just she shuffle a little bit when she walk. When you you know you know they're big when you <laughs> you know them, they do so like that. That's the only thing you could do is just sit them up here like this. You know they big. <laughs> That's who they should have called. And, and, they they and they just rock. <laughs> yep, should have called Betty. So okay, so Brandy, you haven't have you seen yeah. the Exorcist? No. Never. None of the exorcist Never. movies. Uh, you, you know I can't watch scary movies because they stay in my head too long. Have you seen any of the Amityville movies? No. Have you seen I ain't seen no scary movies. Annabelle. The only movie I seen was probably probably was a, a Freddy Krueger movie when I was a kid. And and then uh, identity that wasn't no supernatural movie. It was a dang. <laughs> no, I don't want to ruin it for nobody. But that's another movie I won't watch ever again. But no, I ain't watching scary movies. Them things stay in my head too long. No, I watched Halloween this past weekend. Even when I read, so. a, when I read a book called um, mm -hmm. there's it a book a called, I can't think of the name pissed. of the book. I got pissed off watching it. I'm piercing the darkness. Piercing the something. Piercing the but, darkness is by Frank Peretti. Yeah, Frank Peretti. When I read that book, now that's a book about supernatural, about you know your guardian angel and yeah, that that's a very good book. If it's an really book. To what I read that about, book the fight, huh? by Frank Peretti, and it is literally about this fight that no one knows is going on around you all the time between good and evil. It um, is like the fight of good and evil. Yes, good and evil going on in your everyday life around you that you have no clue about. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good book, and it is scary. Girl, yeah. I had to read that, and that, that's a Christian book. I yeah. had to read that with the light on. I read it three times, though. Oh, pretty good then. Yeah. So, have you? Okay. So, okay. Let's let's move to talk about books that scare us. So, Brandy, you said that since it's almost Halloween, you said Curse of the Darkness. Jackie, do you have a book that scared you that you no. read? No. I barely really want scary movies. I ain't read no scary book. I got to sit up in there by myself in that bed and read that book. No. And that's worse than watching the movie because you're dealing yes. with your own Because I have to create my own scene. Uh -uh. Yeah. I'd be the terrified. book that scared me and to this day, I don't think I can go back to it, is called The Witching Hour. Not The Witching Hour, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know no witch. It's by Anne Rice. I don't know which. Is, uh, which is, I don't know. Uh, mm. Randy, stop saying that. I heard you say you don't know no witches. Oh, that I don't know no witches. I mean, I ain't with no witches. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy, stop saying that. I heard you say you don't know no witches. I mean, I ain't with no witches. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, oh, oh, mm -mm. <laughs> well, she looking for that. I watched Halloween this weekend. I got, I got pissed off. Um, but this is how I watch scary movies. Really? Yeah. Sure. I watch stuff like that too. Like this? And then I go home and I have a bad dream and I be having a bad dream for months. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you stay away from me. I don't watch no scary movies. I, yeah, I, you stay I, away I from it. I don't know. Okay, it was called The Witching Hour. It's called From the Mayfair Witches Theories by Anne Rice. And of course, a lot of Anne Rice's books kind of flow in together like the vampire mm -hmm. series or whatever. So in the vampire series, um there's a character called Memnock. And yeah. Well Memnock bleeds right <laughs> into my throat. <laughs> and so I remember I was pregnant with my daughter and I was reading this book. And basically there's a character in there who the, like he he Every other generation, he'll visit one of the females in the family and their child will become the next Mayfair witch. But he's always there. Randy's covering her ears. Yes. And it scared the living daylights out. Because now, mind you, I'm pregnant. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. that, that Memnock is 
No, Memnon, it's either Memnon or Tautos. No, it's coming. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I have. I was still. I was terrified reading that book. What was them books we read when we were kids? It was a little. It, they were popular. Nightmare in the, the, the Darkness. R.L. Stein. Huh. R.L. Stein. Not not goosebumps. Uh, that other one where it had the creepy drawing on the front it looked like it was leaked oil. It was weird looking. It was like a a, a novel of little short horror stories we, we, from when I was a kid. Oh, oh. tales that tales of. I was something. terrified of that book. Tales of something I forget what it is. Mama wouldn't let me read that book. I was terrified. It's she didn't all, know what um, I was reading. for a week. <laughs> And my mom was like, what are you doing? He would like, let you read those because he was reading Zane. But uh, yes, it's Tales of Something and it's on uh, Netflix mm -hmm. or Prime. What, Zane? You know what they were. I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I still don't want my mama to know that I was reading Zane. Is that bad? Your mama know you was reading it now. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> you know what she knows? Because I was reading it. Let me, I was reading it. And this, you know, so she's like, what are you reading? And I was like, nothing. So I never told her. So I passed the book to my sister-in-law. And then my mom's friend was reading the same book. So she passed it to my mom. And I was like, mom, what are you reading? My mom is stopping at stoplights, like long stoplights, reading this book, right? I'm like, what are you reading? That Brandy was you reading? No, she was so embarrassed herself. She didn't want me to know what she was reading. And then I saw what she was reading. I was like, oh, oh my God, my mom was reading. My mom was reading Zane. <laughs> oh my God. Like, that's why. I, <laughs> Zane, Shane, Shane, I know your name. Oh my God. I didn't read my first. I read. So I read one in high school, but it's because somebody told me to. But when I first started reading the other ones and realized that the one I had read was just minor, <laughs> it was just a pinch. And then here well, come all, uh, what is that? Sitting up at work, hey. like, couldn't, couldn't do nothing. Just sitting up at work, just. And now, uh -huh. that old, uh, whatever, gray. Big gray. I'm like. That's elementary. Y'all need yeah. to go back and read some things because my mind is still blown. They think they're the first ones. My mind is still blown. I mean, it, it, years later, I'm like, you're talking about, I, I haven't read one that I was like, so I guess we ain't talking about scary movies and books no more. Oh, yeah, because we, we went to something else. Um, yeah. I, I got to keep y'all on track because I'm looking at my battery just go. Do, 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 you're talking do, about do. keeping us on track. What? We never no, on track. I'm, I'm keeping y'all on track. I'm qualified. <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Right, um, so happy Halloween. Uh, happy All Hallows Eve. Happy Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. candy. All of that. Eat Take your candy. candy. Uh, don't eat the cyanide pixie sticks. Um, yeah. Other than that, be safe on Halloween. Um, don't like those crazy costumes. Well, okay, before we go, what was the worst costume? Uh, what was the worst costume? The, the, the damn bed sheet. There wasn't no costume. That's what I told Brand. She asked me, I said a bed sheet because we went to Hallelujah night. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me about my ain't costume. No, ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't no trick or treat. <laughs> You're going to be. You're going to be Mary. You see what you went to? You went to the Harvest Festival on the 30th. You're going to be Mary. You're going to be you S. Did, you did trick or trunk. You go over there with your little sheet on, and you go over there and get right. your candy after picking trunks. On Halloween, you're going to be up in that church house because that's what it keeps people coming out. Halloween you night. And you put your mama's robe on your sheet to be a Bible character. <laughs> and she ain't never got that robe back, that robe bell back Ooh. again. <laughs> How many of y'all still got your roll bells because you your kids done use it on Hallelujah night? Wasn't nobody going no trick or treating? We got to go trick or treating. We went maybe a few got, times. We went a few times. Hope, you got a flat sheet because it ain't gonna roll right if you got one. You know the other Ooh. sheet with the feet. <laughs> 
I don't know what y'all laughing at. Who giving their kids to the sheet? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use a flash sheet. You can't use a fitted sheet. Oh girl. <laughs> Woo! Don't do it. <laughs> That's the, finish the, finish sheet. Sheet. the finish sheet tucks up like this. <laughs> you I ain't know. no ghost. <laughs> it ain't no Bible character either. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what's that? What's, what's, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a burrito. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, y'all. We going We just gonna go. We just, Ooh, child. Who did it to that baby? <laughs> oh, cycle. We're finishing. Who did it to that baby? Well, we and they talked to about the church church. the bell on Halloween. We did not have to go to church. Oh. Hallelujah night. Check the shirt. <laughs> I bet you they having it. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, okay. well, don't act like you don't know about Hallelujah night, Brand. Huh? You you don't know about Hallelujah night? No, we ain't heard of Hallelujah night. We ain't heard Halloween. No. I told you that they used to throw Halloween parties for us sponsored by the church. Oh, like yeah, straight the up church. Halloween party oh, at the church. So we had Hallelujah night and you couldn't wear no scary costume. You had to come dress as somebody in the Bible. Girl, the scariest costumes I've ever seen in my life were worn by the church mothers of oh, our church. Oh, no, no, no. They, I kid you not, they had on the scariest mask and they came there in there like the sticky and witches and scared the hell out of all of us. Yeah, I don't know that church. I don't know them. We people. had a Halloween luau at my auntie's house on Vasquez on the east side. And my grandmother, Sister Pearson, Sister Straight, and uh, mother um uh, Not a mother. My grandmother was a mother. Mm. Yeah. And we had a Halloween luau and they came in there with the mask on and oh my God. Mm -mm. We had Halloween night, and you had to come as an animal. Noah's one of Noah's uh, animals on the ark. Wow. <laughs> you had to come as a Bible character. No, we, wow. We, no, we had a regular old Halloween. Not an animal from the ark. Animal from the ark, girl. I nice. wonder one of them come up and said they was one of them uh, pigs that ran off the side of the, the thing. From the thing. <laughs> See, my kids trick or treated. Wait, wait, they can't. My kids trick or treated. So when I was like, you know what, this this trick or this this Halloween, let's go to Halloween night. But my kids were supposed to be like I was the craziest. They're like, what? When I get candy? Oh, we have plenty of candy at our Halloween night. Y'all don't y'all want? Was, candy? Yeah, I, I, they didn't care. They want they want the costumes that they want. You know, you can't go up there with no no screen costume. Oh no, that ain't biblical. You can't come in there like that. That ain't that was well, <laughs> I did seen no face and then verse. Well, we had we did things a little bit different over there at RST. Y'all just have to take the mask off and be John the Baptist. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Bye.